Hello and welcome to clinicalpath.com. Today we are continuing our discussion of acute inflammation with emphasis on PAMPs, DAMPs, and pattern recognition receptors. Our universal picture of acute inflammation is here. We can see the steps that are involved in infection and response to infection, and this has been completely covered once in clinical pathologic correlation lecture. Today we want to emphasize the first three steps of this. If we start with any surface of the body, so this would be a squamous epithelium, we are living in a sea of microorganisms. They are such a huge part of our environment that if you take a fluid like saliva or feces, a third of those fluids by mass are bacteria. So there's an enormous interaction. And so we have to maintain balance with these. This would be homeostasis. And we talk about how we do that by far and away the first and most important step is we have a physical barrier, that's our epithelium. The second thing is that all the surfaces secrete a fluid and then they mechanically remove that fluid. So if it's mucus, it could be cilia or peristalsis or even the bladder in which flushing the bladder is very similar to flushing the toilet in the bathroom. The next thing is that all epithelia secrete proteins, antimicrobial peptides, that profoundly regulate the survivors and balances of the organisms. And then the fourth step in homeostasis is that all of the epithelia have a way of preventing adhesion of the organisms. All of the gut has enormous numbers of lymphocytes and plasma cells that are secreting IgA. If we go to the skin, that's what the surface layer shedding prevents is permanent adhesion by fungi. With all this signaling and interaction, how does the body recognize when there's an infection and the bacteria are making signals? The first thing that one can do is recognize that there is a signal from the pathogen. This would be a PAMP, a pathogen-associated molecular pattern. That would be then a PAMP. The second thing is to recognize that there is cell injury. That would be a damp, a damage or injury associated molecular pattern. And both of these then create an alarm signal. Then there has to be a cell to receive that. And scattered all through the epithelium and through the stroma, there are all these cells that have pattern recognition receptors there to detect that signal. So the one thing that all PAMPs have in common is that they all must be highly conserved. This means they have to be really essential parts of the organism because if they were inessential, then the organism could simply mutate around them. The second thing is that these organisms have to be by class. So they have to be more general products that all have in common, the cell wall, for example. And then the third thing is they can only be present on the microorganism because we're trying to distinguish the difference between self and damage. When we say infection, we always think of the four classes, bacteria, virus, fungus, parasite. How does the body recognize signals from each? When we talk about bacteria, bacteria by definition have a cell wall and we do not. So that's a really great place to go looking for differences. When we talk about how a gram-negative bacteria looks, we want to start with the cytoplasmic membrane. After a small gap, gram-negative organisms have a thin layer of peptidoglycans. And there aren't a lot. This is only about 10% of the organism by mass. And then the next thing we're going to see is the outer membrane. And this has the unique finding of horns because the restricted membrane is the inner membrane. So in this outer membrane are these specific protein structures for permeability that make it quite distinctive. And then lastly, on the very outside is lipopolysaccharides. When we go looking for what we can recognize in a gram-negative, the most classic finding is LPS, and that's on a very characteristic receptor of the membrane, toll-like receptor 4. But many other receptors can be seen to things like porins and peptidoglyglans. If we were to take a look at a gram-negative organism in toto, one of the things that the enterobacteriaceae have in common is they all are motile because they all have flagella. A characteristic protein to go looking for would be flagellin.